Hi there, everyone. It's kind of obsessed with ocean monuments at this current moment in time here. I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm coming at you with four tip, no, five tips for raiding ocean monuments. I promise I didn't do that on purpose. I don't know why I was saying four. I've never done a four tips video. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm all over the place. I have five tips for you that will help you out when you are raiding ocean monuments. I've been obsessed with these things lately because I've been working with them in my Let's Play series. So that's kind of leading to my obsession with them. Go ahead and go down below and drop one more tip for me when raiding ocean monuments. And if you want to see a part two or something like that on this video, drop a like or just tell me, hey, Waddles, can you give me some more tips? So right here, I've laid out five chests. Inside of each chest is something to remind me about what each tip is. <laughs> our first tip is going to be about gear, as will our second tip, I suppose. But in terms of armor, you're going to want to get some armor to raid an ocean monument. These things are pretty difficult if you're on hard. I actually did just watch Vanilla Raccoon raid one without armor, and that was crazy <laughs> but the armor will make your life a whole lot more enjoyable when you're raiding these now in terms of enchantments that i would be looking for try to get respiration in some form and aqua affinity on your helmet that is going to help you see and breathe underwater just exist in general underwater a whole lot then, in terms of your boots, you're going to want to try to get some form of depth strider on the boots. Now, of course, you could do this with leather armor or with diamond, whatever you want. Of course, the diamond will add some protection, though. And protection is what you are going to want when you're heading into one of these monuments because the Elder Guardians are pretty strong and the Guardians in large quantities are very overwhelming. So basically, what I'm saying is try your best to get a decent set of armor before you go and tackle these and focus on getting water-focused enchantments that will help your life out a whole lot. So with the armor out of the way, it's time to look at the weapons that you're going to want to bring with you to the temple. Now, the trident would be wonderful. If you could get impaling and loyalty on your trident, you would probably go through this temple so easily and that'll be that. However, the trident is kind of uncommon and it might be hard for you to get your hands on in the game, especially early on. So if you're not bringing a trident, I recommend bringing a sword and a bow. Now. We'll start with the bow, because of course bows don't really work too well underwater. However, Guardians and Elder Guardians do have a Thorns effect, which will damage your armor kind of a lot over time, especially if you're just fighting a bunch of them. However, if you kill them with a bow, meaning you get up close and you just shoot them, your armor or yourself will not take thorns damage so that is pretty nice now i like to go into these things with an infinity bow and some form of power ideally power four or five i also like to throw flame on these bows because typically when i'm raiding a monument i am going to eventually drain it and if i have flame i will get cooked fish instead of raw fish from the guardians and again, to use the bow properly, you're going to need to get a whole lot closer to these things than normal, but it will help out in terms of dodging the beams from the guardians and also dodging the thorns damage. However, with all of that being said, you still will want an up-close weapon. In terms of a sword, you just want a powerful sword. So I'm recommending something like Sharpness 4, maybe Sharpness 5 if possible, and then Sweeping Edge as well for when the Guardians kind of swarm you. There might be three or four coming at you, and you can take them out a little faster with some Sweeping Edge. It might be a little weird, but honestly, I prefer the bow inside of a monument, even when it's full of water, just to avoid that extra thorns damage and to avoid the close contact or rushing into a crowded room of guardians. I just really prefer the bow. Moving on over to the next piece of advice that I have for you today about monuments. This tip has to do with breathing inside of an ocean monument. Obviously, the thing is all underwater, and I'm assuming you don't have any sponge to begin with. You're going to want to take either a conduit or a half stack of doors about into the monument. Now, the reason I have kelp as well as a conduit is because when you're in survival and you're going into this monument, you will probably get hit with mining fatigue pretty quickly. 
The kelp, however, is still very easy to break. So here I am in the entrance room with a kelp and a conduit. Place the kelp down, then shift and place the conduit on top of the kelp. Then you can punch the kelp out, and if you haven't gotten hit with mining fatigue yet, you can dig out these three blocks, and your conduit will activate just like that. So that's pretty easy. Now, in case you're worried about mining fatigue, I would recommend going ahead and just digging those blocks out first, and then doing the kelp trick. However, let's say you don't have access to a conduit quite yet. Doors will work too. You can place doors down and create little air pockets around the temple as you need. I recommend taking a half stack of doors because it's better to be safe than sorry. If you have more than enough doors, that's good. If you don't have enough doors, that's not very good. Now you can also use these doors to block the beams of the guardians. If you're getting targeted, place a door, get behind the door, right? And then you could open the door and get behind it, but you need to be quick. <laughs> but I find that the kelp thing really helps out, especially with the mining fatigue, because if you're placing even a dirt block and then placing a conduit on top of it, punching the dirt block out or digging it out could take quite some time. So that is tip number three. Take doors or take a conduit and a kelp and place it right in the entrance just like I did there. As an added bonus, if you do have enough prismarine blocks to build a full conduit, if you place it right on top of the monument, the Elder Guardian in that top room should die due to the conduit's damaging effect to mobs that are hostile when near it. So this next tip is all about entering the monument itself, and for this tip you may want to bring some milk buckets. You're of course also going to need a pickaxe. Now you could of course make your way in through the front of the monument just like I did a moment ago, or with some speed and possibly some milk buckets, you could break your way in through the top of the monument. Take out this first guardian that would be in here and is not for me. But you could take him out and then work your way down through the temple. Sometimes I find that this is actually a little bit easier, at least for me, because I find that finding my way up to the top of the monument is harder than finding my way around to the edges to kill the other guardians. Of course, the milk bucket will get rid of your mining fatigue when you drink it, or your conduit effect if you drink it and you have a conduit running. <laughs> Now, if you want to stock up on milk buckets and take more than just one, you could use these buckets to easily, quickly break your way around the temple and kill all of the Elder Guardians. You could also use milk buckets as an option for an emergency escape if you're not doing too well in that monument. Drink some milk, break the walls until you're out of the monument, and swim home. And so, my final tip of the day. This has to do with Elder Guardians directly. When you're taking on the Elder Guardian and there are a ton of Guardians in the room, be patient. Be very careful about just rushing in here and swinging your sword around at the Guardians because the Elder Guardian's beam is very powerful and multiple Guardian beams at once are also very powerful. Now, if you're playing on hard difficulty and you've been into a monument at least once before, you know this very well probably. I kind of tend to make the mistake of rushing things. Sometimes I'll go into battle and I'll be like, okay, this is going to be no problem. I'll run up here and swing at the Guardian. However, you may not realize, like myself, that this Guardian will take a lot of hits to kill. Usually it takes about eight hits with a decent sword, and that takes a minute. Now, if you did rush in and you're getting overwhelmed, use doors, like I mentioned earlier, or even just use normal blocks to create just little distractions. You just need to break the beam in between you and the guardian that is targeting you for a brief moment for the guardian to kind of forget about you and stop targeting you. So just be patient when you're raiding these things. If you're taking a bow into one of the monuments, I do recommend finding a vantage point, like somewhere that I'm standing right now, and taking out some of the guardians in the room before you rush in there to finish off whatever you're trying to finish. The key to beating an ocean monument with ease is, of course, patience. If you are patient when taking on this monument, it will not be all that hard at all, and you probably won't even die. Just be patient and be careful. But those are my five tips for raiding ocean monuments. 
leave me one more down below. Like I said, if you want a part two to this video, I can make that happen. Just let me know. Leave a like or drop a comment. Also, if I do a part two, you would have a chance for your tip to be thrown into that video, which would be pretty cool. I'd mention your name. But with all of that being said, I hope this video entertained you or helped you out. If it did either of those, drop a like and consider subscribing. If you really loved this video, I do have a Patreon link down below. You can pledge and support me directly, but only if you want. My name is Waddles. Go have a good day. I will see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.